Welcome to Frank's Diana Explains and to the last lecture in the Discrete Mathematics course at the University of Cambridge. The pumping lemma is cool and has a delightfully silly, memorable name, but what good does it do us? Why do we care that all long enough strings in the language have a part that can be pumped? Well, an important use for the pumping lemma is, counterintuitively, to prove that the language is not regular. I recommend you like this video because familiarity with this use of the pumping lemma will be very useful for solving exam questions on this part of the course. Just check how frequently it occurred in past years. This is the, how, the outline of how it works. You take a language that you suspect of not being regular. You say, if this language were regular, then it would have the pumping property. But let me show you that there is no possible length L such that all strings longer than L can be pumped. For every L you adversary give me, I'll give you a string, at least that long, that cannot be pumped. This proves that the language is not regular, meaning, among other things, that it can't be recognized using a regular expression. Which answers a question that I posed in the very first video in this series. Can you remember what that question was? And can you now answer it fully and completely? How to use the pumping lemma in practice if I want to prove that the language L is not regular. I know if the language L is regular, it will enjoy the pumping lemma property. So to prove that the language L is not regular, for every possible L, because some, when someone gives me a language, they don't tell me how many states there are in the machine they recognize, they don't tell me which machine recognizes, and so on and so on. So for every possible L, I must find at least one string that, if I pump it, will not stay inside L, or in other words, a string that cannot be pumped. For every value of L uh, in the um, strictly positive natural numbers, I must find a string at least that long in L that cannot be pumped. So it's an infinite number of cases that I must produce in order to uh, prove that the language is not right. That sounds like a lot of work. Um, we should read this exactly. No matter how W is split into three, no matter how W is split into three, so I have to do it infinite times. And for each one of these infinite times, let's try all all the possible way to split W into three. Um, and there is some value of N, could be infinite values of N, but there must be, I find at least one of those for which that version of the string uh, U1 V to the N U2 is not in L. So for each L, I must find some string some way of splitting the string, some exponent for the v in the string that has been split in that way, that is not in L. Then this means the language is not regular because there's no way it could satisfy the property, which was that for every string <coughs> above L, there was some way of splitting into three that, uh, no, every, every string beyond L was pumpable, which means there was some way of splitting into three such that the middle section could be repeated arbitrarily many times. So uh, all this uh, sounds like gobbledygook until you see some examples. So first example, the language of a sequence of A's follows by, followed by the same um, length sequence of B's is not regular. Intuitively, we said, because you can't remember arbitrarily many A's with a finite number of states, and you have to remember how many A's you saw before you can check if you see uh, just as many B's afterwards. Now, if we want to make this argument using the pumping lemma, we have to say, for every possible value of the small l, I will produce a string that is not pumpable. And the string I produce is a to the l, b to the l. So a sequence of l times a followed by l times b. And I say, 
whatever L, this string is not pumpable. Uh, this string is of length greater than L, which is the hypothesis of the pumping lemma, and is not pumpable. Why is this string not pumpable? Because in order for the string to be pumpable, it must be split into three, u1, v, and u2, <coughs> with this part not exceeding the length of L, u1, v, less than or equal to L, uh, with v uh, not the empty string. And uh, if I do that, then because the string is made of a, 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 L times, and then B, 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 L times, then if this part is less than or equal to L, then it's going to be made only of A's. So this is going to be A, 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 A. And then at some point, uh, the B's will start. But these will all be A's. So I can express U1 as A to the something, and V as A, uh, a to the something else, and let me just use the same letters as this so that we don't um, confuse things further than they already are. Uh, what do they call them? That's, my eyesight is too poor to see. A to the R is this one, and A to the S. Okay. And so, because the total length uh, is, um, I have LAs and LBs, so I have that many As so far, then I may have some more As, in case I hadn't exhausted them, because this could be less than or equal. So if it's not equal, then there's some more As left over, which would be L minus R minus S. And then I have all the Bs. So this string is my original string, W. W equals this. And the claim is that this string is not pumpable because this is, this is the U1, this is the V, and this is the U2. So at the moment, this string perfectly matches the A's and the B's. But if I pump this, I will either remove some A's, because uh, V is not the empty string, so there must be some A's in here. If I remove some A's, there's going to be fewer A's than B's. That's already a counterexample. Uh, and if I instead increase this beyond 1, there's going to be more A's than B's. So whatever I do with this string, as soon as I try pumping it, uh, it will give me things that are not in the language, because they don't have the same number of A's and, as of B's. And I can repeat this trick for infinitely many values of L. Every possible value of L, I can build the string A to the L, B to the L, and prove that it cannot be pumped. Uh, and therefore, there exists uh, no possible L beyond which all strings are pumpable in this language. And therefore, this is a proof through the pumping lemma that this language cannot be regular. The palindromes that we also saw previously, uh, all the possible palindromes in some alphabet, which for simplicity we limit to only two symbols, but the same argument would work with any finite alphabet. Uh, the palindromes do not form a regular language because for every possible uh, value of L, I can build a string that is not pumpable, and the string I build is similar to the previous one, a to the l, b, a to the l. That's a palindromic string, obviously can be read from both sides, um, and is of length greater than l, in fact is 2l plus 1, and is unpumpable for the same reason that the previous string was not unpumpable, that if I split it into, um, into u1, v, and u2, then the first part is made only of A's, and the V part of that first part is made only of A's, and if I pump it up, I will then get an imbalance in the A's. There will be more A's in this side than in this side, 
And if I pump it down by setting n to 0, uh, I also have fewer rays here than here. And so any exponent for v other than 1 will cause an imbalance in the a's on either side of the lone v that's supposed to be in the middle. And therefore, for each possible l, I can exhibit a string that is not pumpable. And therefore, the language is not regular. OK? And then the third example is somewhat nastier. And if these things were in an exam question, you'd have an easy time. And if this thing appeared in an exam question, then you'd be in trouble. Uh, but you won't. Uh, at least this year. But um, let's see how the argument would go for this particular language, which is the language of strings made only of A's, where the number of A's in the valid strings is a prime number. So this is a language over the alphabet of simply one symbol, A. And so sigma star is all the strings of only A's, including the empty string. And the subset, L3, is only those where the number of A's is a prime number. So the empty string is not in the set. A single A is not in the set. But two A's is in the set. Three A's in the set. Five A's is in the set, and so on. So uh, what we do here, for each L greater than 1, we must exhibit a string that is not pumpable. And the claim is that if I find a prime number greater than 2L, and I can always find a prime number greater than any number because there's infinitely many prime numbers, then the string A to the P, which obviously uh, belongs uh, to L3 because P is a prime number, uh, is not pumpable and is longer than L by construction. So why would the string A to the P not be pumpable? That argument is uh, more subtle than the others. So let's again uh, use the same notation as here. So our string is going to be A, 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 A. And we need to split it into u1, v, and u2. There's no question about it. All of these are going to be made of a's. There's nothing else they could be made of. But exactly how many a's? So the notation used here is that I'm going to call uh, r the number of a's in u1. A to the R is U1, the first bunch. And the next bunch is A to the S. And then the next bunch is A to the P minus R minus S. So if I try to pump this um, string, I want to prove that if I pump this string, I will obtain something that is not in L3. Well, let me pump this string by the crafty uh, exponent n equals to p minus s. So if I repeat this v part p minus s times, then the resulting string will be a to the r, a to the s to the p minus s, a to the p minus r minus s. How many a's are there in this string? Well, r plus s p minus s squared plus p minus r minus s. That's the number of a's in this long string. And this number of a's, if I remove this r, uh, I can I can factor out a minus s. See? 
to give me s plus 1. And I can factor out a p to give me s plus 1. So these first two give me this. These second two give me this. And then I can factor out the s plus 1. p minus s. And s, what was s, was the uh, exponent of a in v. And v was the one that was not the empty string. So s cannot be 0. s is at least 1. So s plus 1 is greater than 1. So this is not a trivial, uh, not a trivial factorization. This is at least 2. And this p minus s, s was, uh, this was less than l, and p was greater than 2l. So this one uh, is also not less than 1. So this thing is a, a genuine factorization of this total number of a's, which means the total number of a's is not a prime number, because it has two factors. And therefore, this string, which I have pumped by iterating v p minus s times, is not uh, in L3. And therefore, I have a counterexample. For every possible value of L, I can build a counterexample by taking a string with more than 2L uh, a's, which is a prime number of a's, and that cannot be pumped because there is at least one exponent n equal to p minus s, uh, which uh, yields a string with a non prime number of a's, which therefore cannot be on this length. So uh, you can see that you can get quite uh, ingenious with this uh, type of argument. And so we've done all that. This is the last uh, slide in the deck. Example of a non-regular language with a pumping lemma property. So this is something that tells us we've used the pumping lemma in reverse to say, if you're regular, you enjoy the pumping lemma. And if you're not regular, I'm going to show you that uh, you're not regular because you can't possibly uh, enjoy the pumping lemma. However, there exist things that, uh, so the, um, there exist languages that are not regular and yet uh, have the pumping lemma property. So this is a somewhat artificially, um, produced example of something that looks a bit like pieces of what we have seen. So it has um, c to the m, and then a to the n, b to the n. That's similar to what we've seen. So a number of c's at the front, and then same number of a's as b's, but not the same number as c's. And that's one sublanguage. And then another sublanguage, which is made of a number of a's and an unrelated number of b's. So uh, this one clearly is a regular language. And this one we uh, suspect might not be because of that. Uh, and so in total, the union of these things is not a regular language because uh, we are uh, in trouble because of these things. Uh, and yet, this uh, satisfies the pumping lemma property. And it is instructive to try and do this exercise. This would be too difficult to do on its own, I think. But the text of the exercise has a pretty substantial hint. Uh, the hint solves most of the difficult part. There's still a bit of ingenuity for you to apply. And so I do recommend doing that to check that you actually own this uh, material on how to apply the pumping lemma. Proving the pumping lemma is not hard, but actually applying the pumping lemma in different contexts may sometimes be a bit hard. And so I invite you to try this and to try other exam questions that involve applying the pumping lemma to uh, specific languages.
Thank you very much. Best wishes for the rest of your tracks. If you too, like them, enjoyed this course, of course you can't clap your hands, so instead please leave a like on this video and go back and leave a like on all the previous videos you watched that you also liked. Thanks to those of you who are doing this, I really appreciate it. Subscribe to this channel for more videos aimed at the clever computer scientists like you. Thank you and my best wishes for the rest of your studies and your career. Enjoy.